Hey guys, quick question. Why do most architects use SketchUp for concept design, yet most architects don't use SketchUp for documentation? And the answer is that SketchUp's amazing for knocking out concept designs uh, and showing people you know, the design intent. You don't let software get in your way. The issue is, is that when you actually move from SketchUp into uh, 2D documentation, it actually requires a lot of organization. Now I'm gonna show you a good way to actually organize SketchUp geometry without being restricted by the parametrics associated with other BIM programs. And by the way, guys, SketchUp is used more than any other BIM program in the world. So let's have a look at how to automate that. Now I can create walls, roofs, floors, or anything, and I'm just gonna quickly create a couple of rectangles here, nothing too flash. And from this geometry, we could do our standard push-pull, or we could just use a plugin and actually go create floors, floor joists, roofs, slabs, or whatever. I'm going to go create slab. I can choose whether it's above the face or below the face and go submit. Now I have a concrete slab. This slab is parametric. It also is quantified to tell me how much concrete is inside of here. But if we continued on and we said, okay, let's draw some walls on here and we'll make a step down from here. Let's have a quick look. I can go to manual overrides and I can give it a step down. I think it was 152. And I can choose the wall type. Let's say use a wainscot wall here. And we can start to draw around whatever it is that we've chosen. It could be a 2D plan that you've brought in as an image. It could be anything. All right. I can change the products that are used on the walls. Go W go back to my wall tool and I can choose the material selections and finishes that I want to use. So at the bottom of the wall, I may choose to use, let's just say, I don't know, we can search. And let's use maybe a brick. All right, and go submit. It changed the size of the wall for me according to the brick that was chosen. I could also go right click and I could add a window or a door. and choose my window style and put that in here. But more importantly, I can create my documentation from this. So I'll quickly put a roof on here. Create roof from walls. I'll go submit. And we could choose different colors or styles or whatever it is we want to do with our roof. We can also push and pull our walls. So let's say, uh, let's bring this out further. Uh, I'm gonna split the wall. Split wall, go to here, enter. And then I'm gonna push pull this out. Now if I come out further than my roof or my floor, you can see that that's probably not the ideal solution. So simply go back to my walls. I could either move this to wherever I wanted it to be, or I could click on my walls and create a roof according to the walls. Create roof, submit. All right, I can choose a different texture and material. Same with my concrete slab, right click, generate face at base of walls or I could have drawn a sketch up face All right. I can go to my slab tool and I can generate slabs according to whatever it is that I wanted to do below the face in this instance okay obviously I could put in post columns beams and everything else that's required but more importantly the model is organized you'll notice here if I wanted to turn my roof off without creating any scenes I have the ability to turn things off and on very very quickly right it's also quantified so I could click take off and I'll do a quantification in five seconds flat right the most important thing is that you have the freedom of SketchUp, but you can also create all of your 2D documentation. Let's have a go. Click on my scene tool. I'm going to choose black and white. You could choose color and go submit. You'll notice that now I have all these scenes across the top. And if I looked at my site plan, my slab plan, everything that's been drawn in that model is actually created. Floor plan, windows are marked out, sizes are marked out. Uh, elevations, we can add windows and doors in elevation view. Similar to what we would do in other BIM software, but it's happening so much quicker. And more importantly, it's quantifying as we go. All right. Go back and have a look at all here. All right. We can open and close doors. We can look through projects and start to see how this project would go together 
and how it would be built at the same time as documenting this project ready for 2D construction drawings. The key to what I'm talking about is organisation. When you're organised inside a SketchUp, there's no reason to leave SketchUp and move on to another program. There are tools inside of Plus Architect that actually automate the creation of layout documentation, including, including viewports, scales, dimensions, and more. Let's have a quick look. When I click back inside of here, you'll notice I have a layout tool. When I click on my layout tool, I can use a template or create a template or add in my own viewports according to what it is I require. I can click submit and it will automatically create a document set. Now as you can see this is a model from scratch. I'm going to file and save it. Um, call it that. Save. Submit. And essentially what it's doing is creating a layout file in the background. Now I can open that layout file. Uh, here we go. And I can go through the pages that's been created. And you can see I've got my slab plan there. I have my floor plan and I have my elevations and whatever I chose to be on each page. Now I can move these around. I can dimension them. And I can change the scenes inside of each. Right. Very, very quickly do I start to have a dimensionable scale 2D documentation set that can be used for construction documentation and, and guys I've done this in what three minutes in front of you. <clears throat> the difference between Plus Architect and other plugins is that it has a suite of plugins that go together to actually create BIM software. And behind the scenes of what, what I think bugged me with other BIM software was that when we actually went and looked at the model itself, it didn't have the necessary information that sat behind the scenes. Let's have a look at this in all and let's have a look at it in a transparent view and you'll notice that all of the framework and everything is put in there. It isn't an engineering program but it is most certainly a virtual design and construction software and it's organized. It's organized to the nth degree so that we can actually go inside of our walls, we can turn our cladding off or our framing off and have it super organized. Let's turn that off a transparent mode there. And if we turned our framing off, we have the insulation and most importantly, everything is quantified. Guys, we actually have some secrets that we haven't shown just yet. And if you want to get involved in what we're doing, you can register on the Plus Architect site. And once you register, we're going to share some secrets that we've actually put in the back end here that will enable you to use these models to collaborate without actually having uh, to share base geometry. You can share how the product will look. Uh, you can share with subcontractors how things will work. And it's just an amazing output that allows you to use SketchUp to create 2D construction documentation at the same time as actually collaborate with subcontractors, clients, uh, and anyone else that's involved in the project. Again, guys, Plus Architect, you can uh, go to the link below and you can log in and you can pre-register and there's some amazing discounts coming through to people that pre-register. All right, guys, hope it helps. I look forward to hearing your feedback. Cheers.